This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. We're at the camp of Team Fury with me. I've got Big John Fury. How are you? I'm very well, sir. Yeah? Thank you, yeah. Good. S saw a little bit of your training uh, this yeah, morning. Yeah, do a little bit every day if I can. Yeah, went for a run as well this morning? Yeah, done an hour. Yeah? Bit of a few weights afterwards, yeah, keeping shape the best as I can. Yeah. It's a prison thing. <laughs> <laughs> Still in that mentality? <laughs> yeah. Um, six weeks away, or just under six just weeks under, away, yeah, yeah. just under six weeks away, so <coughs> it's approaching very quickly, um, yeah. away from boxing, um, just spoke to your brother Peter and he said, you know, away from boxing, he doesn't sort of really see Tyson socially, but mm. um, from a father-son perspective, how is Tyson away from the camp? Well, away from the camp, you'd never think he was a boxer really, you know what I'm saying, he never mentions it. He doesn't talk boxing. He just he's a family man when he's away from camp. You know, but uh, he is like a fish out of water away from camp. You see Tyson at his best and Annie at his happiest when he is training. You know, but uh, this is boxing he's been doing it a long time. You know, and uh, all habits die hard, don't they? You know, he's a true he's a true fighting man. He lives a fighting man's life. And when he goes home at the weekends, it takes him a bit to adjust. I don't think a weekend's enough really. Mm. Um Obviously, since you've been back in Tyson's life yeah. uh, from from being away, um, you know what sort of influences have you tried to put back into him? I know you know we've spoke about this kind of times before, Listen, but we, we all have crazy days, don't we? You know, we all say things sometimes, you know, on the spare of the moment, what seem a good idea at the moment, and later on they're not such a good idea. But you know, Tyson is Tyson, isn't he? You know, he does. I can only say what I think to him is right. But he's his own man, he just does what he wants anyway. You know, but I try to steady the ship a bit, me. I just say to him, well, listen, don't take everything on board. Take it as it is, relax and see things for what it actually is. And he's good at that. You know, he sees the people what they are, like I do. You know, because I'm a man of few friends and that don't bother me neither. Because sometimes people don't like proper people, do they? They always want you to say things that please other people. But we just don't do that, we don't roll that way. You know, if a man's what he is, I'll say what he is. If he's a good person, I know he's a good person, not even opening his mouth really, you know. But the way it is, that's life. That's the way we live in the world today. You know, it's like, I don't know, in this country we live in, it's one of them, what do you do with people, you know, they just don't get on board, do they? It's a mongrel race we're living in this country, but at the end of the day, the gypsy, well, if you can call this a gypsy, we're travelling people, you know, there's a difference. But, you know, I have an home, you know, we have houses, we've got as good as anybody else. But uh, do we get the respect for that? No. I've never had a job in my life, I've never worked for nobody, neither has any of my family. We don't do it. You know, God give me a brain and I use it every minute of the day. I never switch off. Even in prison, I never switched off. I got the best I could possibly get out of that through using my brain. Because us kind of people, we live in our wits. We have to live in our wits. You never let your guard down being a travelling man because you know the man opposite you has got other ideas to bring you down. And that's the way we've been brought up, because we've never been accepted. If he won 20 world titles, he still wouldn't be accepted, because the gypsy man, he don't work for nobody, pays homage to nobody. The only homage we pay is to God Almighty, on my own father. But that's just the way we are, and we're just a different race of people completely. It's a culture thing. It's different to yours, it's different for theirs, different to many. We've got our own beliefs and we lift our own standards. You know, some people agree with them, some people not. Do you believe that Tyson perhaps doesn't get the credit he should get because of his background and his heritage? And his well, listen, it goes out saying, doesn't it? Listen, if Anthony Joshua had gone the same route as Tyson Fury, he'd be having tea with a queen every night. You know, Tyson, English champion, All-Ireland champion, British champion twice, Commonwealth champion, European champion. WBC Intercontinental Champion, IBF Contra, 24-0 and beat good men, not knockovers like the rest of these men's getting, you know, because let, let it be what it is, I'll, I'll speak straight from the heart, me. Anthony Joshua's a talented man, but in my eyes he didn't win the Olympic gold medal, it was in Britain, he never got it abroad. To me he lost to the Cuban, but that's by and by, that's boxing, we can accept all that. But why give a man more credit? than a man who's actually worked hard for something. And Tyson's worked hard for where he is today. He's fought people at like the best, Derek Chisora, one of the best fighters in the world today. Still is. He beat him in his prime. He was unbeaten at the time. Who'd ever fight uh, Steve Cunningham? 
a fellow who'd been a two-time world champion and go in his own backyard and do it. You'll never see the Anthony Joshua's, you'll never see the Dillian Whites, you'll never see anybody taking chances like that. Deontay Wilder, he's had a title gift to him. You know what I'm saying? This kid's worked hard, tooth and nail for what he's got. He's come up the hard way, even in the amateurs. He was neglected in the amateurs and he poured his heart out for this mongrel race, this, this island in the middle of the ocean, this postage stamp was worthless. You know what I'm saying? It's dumping ground for the world. Let me tell you about it. He's given his all for this country. And what's he got in return? I hope you die, you pikey bastard, on the 24th of October. What's that about? You know what I'm saying? This kid, that's what the way he is. That's why he swears, because he's mixed up. Because he hasn't got his just desserts for the effort he's put in. Because this is a true fighting man. You could roll them up and they wouldn't beat this man. He'd, he'd beat the two of them, Joshua and Dylan White, on the same night, my son. Believe me, take the back around to him. Because the fighting desire, it's like we had it out there. They would talk about it many, many times. And we say, listen, this is how it is. These people here, they got bits of street cred through men. You know, but you take Dillian White out there in that grass field here, look, pull his shirt off and let him have a row out there. Let him, let him have half his ears missing. Let him have the blood pissing out of him. Let him need a hundred stitches after an hour. Let's see how game they are then. He's prepared to do that. Is Anthony Joshua? No. Is Dillian White? No. Derek Chisora? No. Because they've never been in that kind of environment. I know what it's like because I've been there. I've watched it. It's happening. It's a cultural thing. And this is what, this is what gives us the edge. I know he can win. He knows he can win. That's why I don't give a damn. He don't give a damn about Klitschko. He knows that Klitschko what he is. He's a 40 year old man, he's a good champion. Take no credit away from the man, he's done well to do what he is. But can he go in the trenches like a travelling man, a gypsy man, a crossbred mongrel race of a man, what's bred to fight? It's in his genes, you can go back 300 years, we're all fighting men. You know what I'm saying? Is Klitschko, his father's an army sergeant or something, wasn't he? You know what I mean? Fetched up with a silver spoon in the mouth. We've been kicked up, don't we? We've been dragged up, kicked up from pillar to post. We've had to do what we can to survive, to put bread on the table. When these old kids had to go into the hospital and beg milk from to feed them, and some stayed before, wouldn't draw a dole. And I've never drawn a dole in my life. Anything. I've took nothing off this government, me. All I've done is give, and I've given the precious thing of all, Tyson Fury, the best thing to ever come out of this island, this rubbish dump, and yet they can't get behind him. That's all it is, a rubbish dump, a dumping ground on the people who run it just because, and they say there's no racism. I'm telling you about racism, it's never been as bad towards travelling people today. He's a good lad, no criminal record, never been in trouble. I've been in trouble. I don't care what people think of me. They probably think I'm a raving madman, this, that and the other. But I'm an intelligent madman, if you've ever heard such thing. And nobody can get things over me, because I'll tell you now, while we're thinking, while they're thinking about it, I've already been there and done it, because I've forgotten more than they know about life itself in general. But this lad here, he's listened to it all, he's seen people around him. And you know what? I say what they are, so some of the plastic people, take no heed of them. Does it really matter what they believe? Because what happens is, their heart wants them up that much, it overrules the brain. And they hate travellers in that form that they're clutching onto floating logs, saying, oh, Joshua might be the man, he can do it. Dillian White, he might be to do it, because they want it to happen that bad, because they cannot foresee a traveller gypsy world champion. This man is the best in Britain, and them two can't, lace his, can't carry his jock strap, them. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way it is. Because he's earned his stripes. In the amateurs, professionals, whatever he's been, they haven't. They've had it give on a plate. He's a Commonwealth champion. He got a knockover for a Commonwealth title, taking nothing away from, from Gary Cornish. He ain't a proper fighting man. He's a big lump. You know, he's a woodcutter from the island somewhere. He isn't a fighting man. And he proved it because he would have got up. He would have got up and tried to do something. You know what I'm saying? He didn't. He accepted defeat. That's it. Because he's not a true fighting man inside. This man here, you see him on the 24th of October. What true fighting men do when they're losing. And I don't think he will lose. But if he is under pressure, you watch what he can come out with. He'll surprise the world, this man. But he ain't surprising the world because they already know what we've got up our sleeve. They already know what kind of people we are inside. You know what I'm saying? I done five long years in prison, never took an aspirin. All these men was crying, couldn't do the time. Can't do taking drugs here, getting phones shipped in. I never took an aspirin. I never broke any rules. Yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full for five years, never took an aspirin. I had the flu and everything went down to the medical centre, nothing. I didn't want nothing from them. I thought, you've got nothing to offer me. I'm here to do one thing, like I said to him, I'm here to do time, easier to fight. And that's what he's going to do, fight. And you'll see that come the 24th of October. John, you said <coughs> they can't see uh, a travelling world champion. Is it they can't see or they don't want they to don't see They don't want to see it. But let me tell you, you're going to see it and get used to it. Because he's going to be there for a long time. Because I tell you, 
these make beliefs what you're making out of champions, these paper champions, they ain't gonna take my son. Because if, if not, forget Klitschko, let's have it now. He filled the O2 arena out. You know, my son can make as much out of fighting Anthony Joshua today as he can Klitschko. You know what I'm saying? But let's get it on. We ain't worried about these so-called Brits, these street gangs, these this, that and the other. We're not bothered. Because I could put my fist through them outside. You know what I'm saying? Because I could worry them like a Rottweiler on the floor and they'd be screaming for the mother after 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? So what can he do? And I'm an old man, 50 year old, beat out, finished with 200,000 miles on my clock. This is a young man. What's bred to fight? Look down his history. And that'll tell you so much about him, you know what I'm saying? You know, I fought Henry Akawani without even training. Didn't do nothing. He was double, he won the WO title four fights later, 18 and 0. I'd, I'd done a fight for 18 months and as fat as a pig. I got in the ring and done a lot better than these men what's been in training camps. You know, I got beat, but I'll tell you what it is. I give him a hell of a row and he knows it for three rounds. But not training, didn't do nothing. I had 13 fights in 10 years. And I don't think I made five grand at the lot. I'd done it because I like fighting. I'd have me tea, me bacon and eggs, or I'll have a fight tonight. Do you want to fight? Yeah, I'll go. This is where he's coming from. But he's had all the camps. He's got the brains behind him. He's got the experience. Where I've been had over and rumped to death in the boxing trade, I know what they're coming with, like my brother does here. Listen, let me tell you this much. The Germans didn't lose the war through the troops he had. They lost the war through the brains at the back of England. Churchill. And he hasn't got one Churchill in his corner. He's got two. Me and him. You understand me? So I don't know how they're going to deal with that. Do you? And all I've got to say on a final point here, not bringing politics because he's long gone, but let me tell you, Tyson will right all the wrongs. Past history, this man is going to right all the wrongs. And if you're a sensible, clever man, you know what I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying. But he will right all the wrongs in history, what's been done to us, down the line. All these people that's gone in our industry, the gypsy people, even the Jews want to get on board. Even the Jewish people want to get behind this man. Get the Jews on board. Because he's paying a price for them as well. He's, he's paying his payback time for all of them people. Then mind all of us. And where better place to do it? Germany. And that's why we got to go there. Because we know we can beat Klitschko. We'd beat Klitschko on the moon. We'd beat him on the moon. Mars anywhere. Because he can't beat a fire what can't be put out. And this man is he. He told you don't give a damn about nothing. It's not about the money. It's not about the fame. None of us want to be famous. We're never going to be famous anyway, we're 80 people. The only thing we're famous for is infamous, not famous, infamous, which is a lot worse. But let me tell you, he's got the desire, he's got the courage, he's got the size, he's got the youth, and he's carrying what he needs to carry into this fight. And with that, he's got a lot of work to do, Vladimir Klitschko. Don't be wrong, people. It's an heavyweight fight, and he's not called Dr. Steel Hammer for nothing. On this level, men this big, anything can happen. But I'm 99 and three quarter percent sure my son will prevail in Germany. And you're gonna get used to it, fella. You're gonna have to have and put up and shut up with a gypsy champion. Because that's what's coming on the 24th of October. And if he if he if he does lose, I will personally remove my trousers and walk through London with no trousers on. That's if the probation will allow me to do that. Without putting me back inside for exposure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, well listen, I can't remember what my original question was, but listen, John Fury, thank you very much. Listen, thank you very much, and can I say a special thank you to all the genuine fans out there, people who do support him. But listen, if you like genuine, genuine, sincere fighting men, and like people who speak from the heart, come on board. But you know, if you're a complete dickhead, what's good to be a yes man just because it pleases the man next to you because he might have a bit better card he's got a bit better house forget all that trash mate it means nothing you be yourself stand up and be counted you've got as much right to be in this world as the next man money don't make a man but what does make a man is true people around him he can rely on trust okay Mr John Fury Thank you for your time, Coogan. Thank it's you very good. much for talking to uh, and thank you. TV and, uh, and we can do interviews without swearing see and I have my moments. <laughs> you didn't swear once in it, no. did you? No, I no, don't. didn't. No, he made me swear the other day because he got on my nerves, <laughs> winding me up, calling me this, that and the other. So anyway, I swore then. But I tell you what, I don't make an habit of it. And because let me tell you something, people who know me, even in all the people who doesn't always been close to me, they know what I'm like. They know what I'm like. I'm an, I'm an intelligent human being, me. I've had no education at all. I know when a man's a man and when he's a failure and when he's a pretender. That's all you need to know in life. Live on your wits. Use your wits. Don't let nothing come out of a book. Because anything that comes out of a book, and if you've got to look up to the man next to you to lead your life, forget it, mate. You're a yes man. And there's no need to be like that. And we ain't yes men. 
We do as we do from the heart. And if we think it's right, we're not breaking any laws, we go for it. It's like this tight that work this fight here, the World Heavyweight Championship of the World, we're going for that. We're, we're not going to make the numbers up, people. We're gonna win it. Because believe you me, there's more at stake than you think with us. It's pride, it's everything, it's culture, it's past people what's dead. There's a lot of people gotta be paid back, and he's gonna pay them back. 24th of October. Buy your ticket. Because it'll be the best fight, win, lose, or draw, you people's ever seen for a long time. And I'll tell you what you will remember a gypsy for. Go in there with all the art in the world and they'll say, even the ones that don't like Gypsy, I'll tell you what, by God, he done well. What a fight that was. I've had me 14.95. That's what they will say. And I can guarantee you that. <laughs> so, get on with that. John, just, just one final thing I've just remembered. I interviewed uh, Billy Joe Saunders recently. Yeah. And uh, Billy Joe Saunders, at the end of the interview, uh, made a point, which I'm, uh, I'm very w aware of, that um, the term pikey is offensive and race, racial, racist, sorry, towards travellers. And I don't think some people quite understand that. They think it's a term for travellers. Well, let me know. Let me, I can explain that one, because I'm a bit older than Billy Joe. The word pikey had nothing to do with travellers. Nothing at all. The word pikey was a place in the, in the Victorian times where the downouts could get a meal. It was a place where you went called pikeys, where you had no money, you had no home habitation. It was somewhere like the South Asian army is today. 200 years ago, and they called it Pikey's. Pikey's was a place in London where the down and outs could get fed. No to do with travellers. No to do with them. I've never seen a down and out traveller. Because if he's a down and out traveller, he ain't a traveller. Because a traveller can't be down and out because he's got too much sense. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I've never been down and out. I've just come out of prison from five years. I'm not down and out. You know what I'm saying? All those people, what you see in the scrap caravans, the snatch style things, they ain't travelling people. That's why they're down and outs. A gypsy man, a traveller man, he's too clever for all that, he can get his living. He's got the best of everything. That's what they do, isn't it? You know, and little Billy Joe, he knows his stuff, and good luck to the little lad, he's a good fight. Good fighter. Little Billy Joe, I like him. I like him a lot, and I know him from a kid from the amateur days. You know, he's got a good heart, he knows what he's got to do. He's a travelling man, and he's going to fight like a travelling man. You know, like Andy Lee, he's Tyson's cousin. At the end of the day, another good, good kid. Another good lad, Andy Lee. But at the end of the day, what can you do? They have to work with people, ain't the family. Because the family don't know enough about this job. Where Tyson's lucky, we do. You know, how would Andy Lee and Billy Joe like the fathers to be in the corner? And an uncle and a father for a trainer. And an advisor. You know what I'm saying? You can't go wrong with your own father, can you? But like Andy Lee's got another man. Adam Booth ain't gonna die for Andy Lee, is he? Jimmy Tibbs ain't gonna die for Billy Joe Saunders. You know, the strange people. There are ways of getting a living to both them men. So, but here, it's not about the money. It's about my son who I'd die for, and it's about my brother, blood kind, you know. What he thinks, I already know he's thought it before he even thinks about it, so vice versa. So how can we really go wrong? It's a family thing, it's not called Team Fury for nothing, is it? It's not called Team Fury slash this uh, Tom, Dick and Harry. It's called Team Fury. There's nobody else on board, is there? Nobody else on board that really matter anyway. There's associates, and people help out, and thank you very much to all of them. But it ain't called Team Fury for nothing, is it? And we are a team, and a strong team, too. And we've got some good fighters as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, John, thank you very much again for talking to uh, IFL yeah. TV. Uh, let you crack on with the rest of your day. Yeah. Training session at half three, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Back yeah. at the gym and then sparring yeah, later sparring on. Tonight, yeah. So, uh, so pretty tall pans out all right. Yeah, which I'm sure I will. I'm going to have a round with Tyson, apparently. You're going to have a round with Tyson? Apparently. That's what Peter Make just sure said. you get a good spongy head guard. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you give him be nice to him before you get in the ring because he's in an evil mood my friend I'm telling you I wouldn't want to be sparring him tell me right. the truth he said to me do you want to move her? I said no thank you I'll come back when you're in a better mood <laughs> Kugan right. thank you very much anyway <laughs> thanks a lot yeah. John Fury thanks for the time yeah, cheers TV. thank you very much cheers mate cheers mate thanks a lot